Washington Northern. This is Burr Stewart, your host, and uh, I wanted to uh, confess that last time we did a live stream, I was um, uh, somewhat reluctant uh, to cut down this front fascia enough. So I'll put on the safety glasses and we're going to get this job done right. We had a couple of friends over this um, uh, this afternoon and they totally agreed with my instinct. Two things here that you can see on this new area. One is that the edge of the retaining wall should clearly be reflected in the uh, a vertical section of the front fascia. And the other is the intriguing idea that, that we could run a ravine down below the pavement level to run the water out because, as you all know, drainage, drainage, drainage are the three things we need to do to have a successful railroad. So uh, we're going to put a drainage ditch in here, and I'm going to lower this level down of the front fascia a little, even though we went to such efforts yesterday to um, paint the top of it. Uh, and so I'll put the camera in the tripod so you can see it. And we'll get to work and try to get this done quickly. Seems uh, awfully awkward. There we go. There we go. We straightened it out a little bit. Hello, Silas. All right, so. What we're going to do here is try to position this. Here, let me lower it down. Those uh, car card boxes are very nice when you're having a big operating session, but they don't do very much for us right now. So I didn't put my earbuds in tonight. Hope you can hear me all right. You'll get a slightly different type of soundtrack today. I'll be curious to listen to that and see how it is. Can you hear me all right? We need to remove these. Because the saber saw will need, need to be able to move around. And I'm going to take this piece of track in because it's not glued in yet. Oh good, thanks. Glad you can hear. Uh, I'm taking that track off so we don't mess it up either. So we're going to take our saber saw. That's what a saber, you know what a saber saw looks like. This is an old Craftsman that I bought at Sears about 40 years ago. It's still working fine. And I'm going to plug it in. Fortunately, unlike computer peripherals, the outlets are still the same as they were 40 years ago. Well, hmm. I guess before I saw... Before I turn on the saw, we really should figure out what we're doing uh, with some sort of a marking. That would be clever. I need a straight edge. We had some friends over today, so a lot of work got done, but the trouble is that the tools are moved around. So, if we, we want to cut this down, but not all the way to the pavement. So I'm going to put a little mark along the edge here that we can saw to.
So that wasn't too clever. And then we'll see what happens when we get down there. Now this, this edge needs a mark too, which we could probably do by eye, but I'll go ahead and put this down. And we need to mark this over here. There's nothing too precise about this, but I feel a lot better now with some marks to follow. So I'm going to saw this along here. Sorry for the noise. And then we'll, and then we'll tackle this front, uh, this, this edge here. Uh, let's see. Remember I was using something to protect the... I was using a piece of cork to protect the... Uh, okay, so can you see all that great? Yeah, you can see that. Here we go. Wish me luck. Right. So far so good, right? saw we really don't want to saw that um, switch machine off so I guess what we're going to do is put a little block here to get ourselves away from the from the uh, switch machine okay you ready Ooh. Ouch. Ooh, that wasn't good. That really wasn't good. I wasn't concentrating on the on the uh, the spacer block enough. I gotta hold that spacer block properly and keep the cork on so we don't ruin the I guess I could pull that off. Oh, maybe having the spacer block vertical would help, too. Yeesh. It really doesn't like being so far back. Does it? And you could argue we could do this by hand, probably. Safer. Yeah, see how we're... Yeesh! All right, forget that. All right, so this is a much better uh, height above the pavement. We don't want cars and trucks to fall off the edge along here, but... Uh, let's see, should we fix this first? What do you think? No, let's go over to the... Let's go back over to the uh, retaining wall. Let's do... Let's cut that first. Any comments? Did you hear that? Yeah. All right, great. Now, we're going to cut this vertical slot. That's the easy part. Well, I guess I should, well, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this vertical slot down. And then we're gonna do a ravine, and that's gonna be the cool part. Okay, so if we, you know what? I don't even like using this machine on something this delicate. Let's, let's use a regular saw. The, the thing is, 
course, there are a lot of different types of regular saws, but I really like this um, flexible pull saw, but especially here because I want a really precise uh, match to the angle. I don't know if you can see that from that point of view. Let me show you this way. So, see, here we're lined up with the, the angle of that retaining wall. See right in there? Oh, you can hardly see it. But, um, there we go. But what I want to do is, see, remember we cut this the other day with a curve? I want the front edge of the fascia to match exactly the curve of the retaining wall. So if I, so if I come in here and use this tool, it'll be just right, and we can... And because this type of saw is very sharp, see it, it, it comes right down. It comes right down like that. So now we have to figure out how to cut the ravine down, down in this area. Let me expand the view for you. Um, Come back over here a little bit. Model railroading is fun, and November is model railroading month, so that's why we're doing this so much. So here, here we have the regular front edge. And what I want to do is come down here, make a little ravine, and then cut, cut over there. But this needs to be relatively flat, so I think the first thing we should do is just... Yeah, just get rid of this piece of material. Hopefully, yeah, see, see how nice that cut came out there? I, I'll, I'll blow it up for you, you can see what I mean. See, that's going to be beautiful. When we put a, some sort of retaining wall right along here, it'll come right out to the edge of the fascia, and it'll look like it was all built that way. Now, the question is, how do we get a saw cut down here to make a ravine? And we're going to be cutting down pat, through this foam and down into... I'm thinking about... Let me just draw it with my pencil again. You got to constantly pay attention to what we're doing, but it's hard to do that when I keep losing the white pencil. Okay, so the idea is to come down here and make some kind of a cut, and then come back up here like this. That's what I'm thinking: is that it looks clearly like there's drainage happening. So if we cut at an angle like this, that'll at least get us part way. I'm not sure how we're going to cut this part, but if we start with this, at least that'll get us part way there. And when we get to the foam, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but you know, when we get done with this, we can install that switch machine that the ground throw that we didn't do the other day. See how much it helps to make a bright white line so you can really see what you're trying to do? Now, one could argue... There we go. Oh, cool. This is going pretty well. At some point, I'm, I'm cutting into plywood here. So that's going to really slow me down. And arguably... It's going to ruin this knife and this uh, saw because this saw is not really designed for plywood. So see, that's what I'm thinking. That's the line of drainage for that hill. Problem is, how do we do this side? And I don't really have any good ideas. But I'm going to start... I'm 
going to start by changing to a different saw. And I think I think we sort of I'm a little concerned about ruining this saw because it's meant meant for fine woodworking, not rough. Now I do have a, a steak knife. We could try that. See how that works. That seems kind of stupid. And I have a regular. Oh, I didn't mean to keep this so uh, blown up for you. Sorry about that. Um, try using a zip saw. I wonder what a BD zip saw is. I never heard of that. Yeah, a knife. Well, let's try this. So, that came out well, but it's only part of the ravine. See, that's the plywood I was talking about. I think it's cool that we're cutting into the plywood, but um, that's as far as we want to cut. The question is, how do we get this part? Carefully is the answer. Carefully. Don't do anything stupid. Wow, how about that? Now, the only thing is it's not quite, we want the water to come from here over to here. And it's not here, let me blow it up for you again. If you can't see it. So far, so good, right? Oops, too much magnification. All right. Um, so far, so good, but I'd like to get it over there. And now, that, now that we've gotten this far, I guess we can get it over there. Just something like this and something like this. How do you, what do you say? Yeah. All right. Now what I'm thinking is, what I'm thinking is this is starting to look like a little bit of a drainage ditch, which is just what we're looking for here. Okay, are you happy? Happy with this? All right, let me take the vacuum cleaner and uh, see what we got. There's a funny smell down here. I think it probably is that EVA foam just that I just sawed through. Let off an odd gaseous smell. <gasps> That is looking good. That's a big improvement. Now we know where the water goes, flows down into this crack, and uh, scenicing that won't be hard. And we've got a nice retaining wall edge. I'm very happy about that. This kind of thing pops in here, and we've got our siding. Now the only thing is we screwed up this little detail here. So I guess we should fix that before we move on. I was wondering what I was going to do about this. This is kind of lame, but 
It'll do for now, I guess. Let's see if we... It's hard to always know exactly what the right tool is for the job. I'm not too convinced about that, but anyway. All right. Another little shot of vacuum. <laughs> Now, for our next magical trick, I'm going to stick this in here. Now, I know this track needs to get glued down, but, but I'm going to be clever for a change and take that piece of track over the workbench and weather, paint and weather the track so I don't have to do it on the layout. But, um, Let's go over here and install that ground throw that we were playing around with the other day. Have you ever installed a Caboose Industries ground throw? They're pretty nice to use. We were playing around with the switcher today, so that's why that was there. So I have two I've got two screws over here. I'm going to put this in. And remember, we had this, we already figured this part out. But what we didn't figure out was that we need a couple of ties. Switch, uh, well, imitation switch ties, I call them. Because in the real world, you would want... You would want these ties. Can you see this okay? As long as I don't kick the stand, right? In the real world, these these ties would be all one continuous long tie um, here. But what we're going to do is we're just going to glue it in place as if it was a big long tie, and it'll give the appearance of it being a long tie without actually being a long tie. Now, that is valuable to do um, be nice to use uh, some kind of glue that would hold that down. I'm usually too lazy for that kind of thing. Now, this hole... So anyway, you see what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to screw the thing down on these two ties so that it'll be at the right height there. But the, before we do that, we have to figure out how to get the... Um, <coughs> hole big enough uh, and the uh, little point in the ground throw small enough that it'll fit in there. So that's a... I think that's the hardest part, is getting that just right. Um, I have a, a little piece of very fancy sandpaper that I normally use for trimming the hole a little bit. There are several ways you can do it, though. Another way is to use a flat file. So we pull away. Let's pull away from the action for a minute. So I'm going to take this flat file and I'm just going to file the point down some. Now this is a piece of cast plastic. Delman maybe? And it's pretty strong. So I've never had any trouble with these pins breaking off, even if I sand them to a little bit smaller diameter. 
in such a, a ridiculous manner as this. I never said what I was doing was any good. I'm just saying I, I'm showing you what I'm doing. Um, and I really appreciate the comments people have about ideas for tools and different things. Um, so I think what I just did there uh, was to make this shaft, this little uh, uh, spike, whatever you want to call it, that goes down into the ground throw. I think I made it a little bit narrower. I'm not doing. I'm not measuring it or anything. I'm just. I'm doing that to help us with this installation. Now we need to make that hole a little bigger. And that is also a little. And debatable. The best way to do it is with a, a reamer file. And what I've got here is just the drill that I originally drilled it out with. And all I'm thinking is if I if I rotate it at an angle, if I can keep from breaking the drill, I'll open up the copper cladding, but I don't want to open it up so much that it loses strength. See what I'm doing there? I'm just kind of opening it up. Now, if with any luck, I can get it open enough that it'll go in there. Yeah, I think, I think that's going to work. Now, ideally, I use that word a lot, don't I? Ideally, ideally, you do it right the first time. Ideally, you have some idea what you're doing. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do uh, is put this screwdriver underneath there so that when I push down to get this thing in the hole, it doesn't break the tie, but it makes a nice strong bond. Sometimes it'll go snap right in there, but you don't. What you don't want is for the PC board tie to snap, because then we'd have to start all over again, re, you know, rebuilding the switch. Now, for my um, money, if there was any money involved in this, um, I think that that's plenty nice enough down there. Um, one, one thing that you will notice is that the height of the rail and the height of this little rod here it needs to be pretty close because sometimes you can have a locomotive truck uh, or grab iron or something can go by your stirrup step and you don't want anything to catch on that. But I'm, I'm feeling like that's close enough that we can we can use it. Now the other issue is is there room to get the screws in the hole um, you get the screws in the hole around these switch ties. And I, I think the answer is yes. I'm pretty sure it is. So we're gonna go ahead and drill the holes. Now the trick here is we want the points centered and these are um, micro-engineering points that have springs so that's a little tricky but I've got the points centered now and that means that and I've got the uh, uh, ground throw lever in the upright position. It's awfully hard to see that when it's black so see, I've got these centered. This is an upright. So now when I drill the holes, they should be, ideally, they should be in the, in the right place. So, and of course, I'm drilling the holes in the cork that we installed yesterday. Was that just yesterday? And uh, that's easy to do, and drill and cork. But I always try to go down into the plywood underneath so that when my screw gets down there it has something it can grab onto so there we go that was nice got down into that and something I usually do I might as well do it this time too I usually put the first screw in before I even drill the hole for the second screw because um, uh, that way I know I can check the position and feel feel like we're we're on the right path here 
So we'll put this screw in, see if we can get it down to the, this is a 3 8 inch, a number zero by 3 8 inch brass uh, wood screw. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drill the other side. It's looking pretty good. The points are still centered. The ground throw is still straight up. And now we're putting in the second, the second screw. And it's making some noise like it's getting into the plywood. Or some weird thing is happening. Yeah, I think it, I think it got in there. Can you see this all right? I guess so. All right, here's the other screw. We'll put it in there. And then we'll see about gluing the ties in position. Well, first we'll test it and see if it even works. That's the scary part. What if we put both of these screws in and it doesn't even work? Okay, now that's a little close. Theoretically, you could notch that wood tie so that all the, the uh, so that it stayed away from the. No, that's that's looking fine. Now, can you see the points? Yeah, let's try flipping to see what happens. All right, goes over there, and that goes over there. Cool, huh? And isn't that amazing how close those points are in these DCC-friendly turnouts? Okay, so um, the only thing left here, I'm really feeling good about this ground throw installation. Um, the only thing left is uh, I would put a little bit of... Um, Uh, my liquid latex uh, glue um, around the the uh, on the side of the ties so that they um, will uh, stick in place but we don't want to glue the whole assembly see how that just kind of went on there next to the tie this is a very awkward dispenser. It's supposed to go right next to the tie. It's hard to get it to drop just in the right spot. Okay, so let's prod it over there. See if we can get it to move slightly over. There we go. See, once we get it to the tie, It'll seep into the tie, and uh, it'll it'll those little white balls will slowly disappear, and they'll the tie will be nicely secured for the rest of time. But we haven't interfered with the throw of the mechanism by doing that. Now, um, uh, to make this to make this look better, we'll come back and paint the, the brass uh, screws. We'll paint them a dark brown as well as most of the throw mechanism. And I also like to put um, paint on the, um, you can see here as a good example, I like to put red paint on one side. So when I have it thrown here, the red is showing up here and it's visible here, this red uh, pin. And then I flip it over the other way and it's yellow and yellow. So that way you know yellow means straight and red means curved. And uh, so you can just glance at the ground throw and see which way it's set. In this case we want it yellow so that it can be set right. Now right next to it is the entrance to the inner bay engine terminal and that should be set green because green means it's a mainline turnout. And that's um, how you tell the main line from the 
side tracks because the side tracks all have yellow targets, whereas the main line all has have green targets if they're in the straight position or a full upright and locked position, as we used to say. Um, I think that might be it for tonight. Just wanted to make a little progress on the the uh, cutting that ravine before I forgot about it. So let's just take one more look and review what we've done here. We installed a ground throw on our new switch and we put in a ravine. Hello, Mystic Southern. Good to see you. Um, I guess there's one other thing we could do, which is to put back our car card boxes. I think, I think we're done with that, which one could certainly make that argument. I don't know. And mobilized. So let me grab the uh, screwdriver and put this back. This is the easy one. And that's fine. That's just where we want it. Now the other ones are going to be a little more complicated because we now cut down on their height. I don't know, this is interesting. I need to change the view for you for a second. There we go. We're almost done. So we got this lowered down, but we haven't got this figured out. So this car card box was here, and if we install it like this, it's going to be a little high. But I'm not sure I care about that because when you get close to it, you peer over it. There's, so we have we have two choices. One is to cut this down, and the other is to just let it be the way it is, where you peer over it and it's lower. I, I don't know. I guess we don't have to decide this tonight. You can see how easy it is to put these boxes back on and off. But if I was going to lower this down, since I'm cutting into the side of the plywood and there's just air behind this masonite, if I was going to lower this down, um, let me show you what I'm talking about. Right now, this is the height we're at. And what we want to do is lower this down. I'm to, that's what I'm thinking. We want to lower it down. But it looks like we could get away with I don't know. It's a question of do you trim the box or do you lower it down by um, raising. I'd have to put a different hole in here so I could lower down this car card box. I don't know. I'm going to put the car card back, box back. This is a very large railroad and we've got lots and lots of things to work on. Especially, especially during model railroad months. So We'll just put it back like this, and we'll come back to the question later of when I cut that over. Because you can't see it too well from your point of view, but when I look, when I look, at, when I come up here and look at this, because we cut down the fascia, you can it opens up the view of the pavement. So whatever details are there uh, will be there, and that will be cool. So shall we? Celebrate with a little bit of action. 
or not. And a question just came in, do I use JMRI or only car cards? And the answer is yes, I'm in the middle of playing with both of them. Um, if you were asking me. But I... Uh, I don't know, we'll talk about that some other time. All right, we don't need this in the view anymore. But if we were to... Let me just fire up the railroad and we'll run that switcher in. All right, we're going to see if we can find number 165 in here. There it is. And we hear it. Put on the head front light, the back light, the rotating beacon, the sound. And you might be able to hear the sound better uh, since I'm, I don't have my earbuds in. And this will be a first good test of our new switch machine. Can you see it from that angle? Uh -oh, we better improve the angle here. I want you to be able to see that switch machine. Uh-oh, we're on the wrong track. Well, that's no good. This is a brand new Rapido SW1200, and I've done some work on the CVs, but I'm still not totally satisfied with the jerkiness of it in, in slow speed. So we flip the switch, and then come back. Come back into the correct track. Here we go. A little bell, perhaps. Can you hear that pretty well? What? Again? This is the advantage of unrehearsed live TV. Okay. Oh, good. Thanks. Glad you can hear all right. When I have my earbuds in, I don't think the sound fidelity is nearly as good. But the bell is really annoying, so I'm going to turn it off. So now we'll flip this switch, brake, forward, release the brake, and we'll see if we can couple up to this car. Yeah, it really does sound good. Thanks, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Oh, why did that stall? What the heck? Let's try that again. I guess I'm going to have to break down, like I said yesterday, and clean the wheels. No, installed again. How about that? I do not understand that. All right, here we go.
beautiful little GN general service gondola here full of ties that need to go to the MOW track. That's awfully ugly. Sorry about that. Now we'll flip over our new ground throw we just installed. And we'll come back. Did I even put this track in the joiners? Oh, I guess I did, yeah. Now, if you remember yesterday when I did this, the car uh, rolled back towards the engine. So we'll see if that happens today. We'll uncouple it. And it's doing much better. But you see how jerky it is? I'm going to have to go in and adjust the motor CVs. Because I don't think that's uh, our regular level of perfection. Yeah, this is a Burlington Northern SW 1200 switcher made by Rapido. Just came out a couple months ago. It has a Tsunami, I mean, uh, sorry, a ESU Lock Sound 5 decoder in it. And... Uh, it's a real work of art. The um, rotating beacon, if you haven't seen my other videos with it, the rotating beacon has four little LEDs in it that are flashing in sequence so that it really looks like a rotating beacon. I'll, I'll blow this up since we're basically uh, heading out at this point. I'll just follow this engine passed and you can see it. That rotating beacon really is super. Look at that thing. That is a cool switcher. I agree with you. Alright, we'll just park it right there where it died. I really do apologize for my lack of wheel cleaning and track cleaning. I'm in the middle of this huge construction project, so just I'm not paying attention to every single thing. All right, well, thanks a lot for joining me. And uh, again, this has been uh, Burr Stewart with another construction um, video on the model railroad layout. And I think I'll, before I sign off, let me just give you a quick tour in case you're not familiar. Um, this is a model of the Inner Bay Yard on the Burlington Northern in 1973, which was just after the merger. So this used to be a big Great Northern um, yard. And um, we've been working recently on this end of it where there was a car repair shop where the switcher is there. And this is a maintenance of way materials track. And we're also uh, building some sand towers to go over there by the engine facility. I don't have room for the roundhouse that existed there, but I did have room to put half of the time oil tank in here, which was used for supplying um, diesel fuel to the locomotives all over the Pacific Northwest. This was kind of a hub for the Great Northern, and, and then of course the Burlington Northern. And um, so then, anyway, that's the context. What we've been working on is trying to finish this yard up. And uh, down in the distance there, you can see the Dravis Street overpass, um, which goes between the neighborhoods of Queen Anne and Magnolia. So this, this yard is the best I could do to kind of represent the, um, the operations of Inner Bay. All right, well, with that, um, I'll flip it over. And say bye, everyone. See you soon.